All right, so today's video is a big task. I just finished filming all the footage, so that's why my makeup and my lips look a mess because this was a lot of work. I'm going to share with you my entire Pat McGrath collection. I'm not gonna swatch everything, but I will give you mini reviews on everything and there will be some swatches. So hopefully if you are looking into Pat McGrath and you were curious about the line, this video helps you out. If you're new to my channel, I cover everything that Pat McGrath launches. So I have, I wanna say probably like 80% of her collection, if not more. My collection is ridiculous, but I'm excited that I can be a guide for you if you are interested in Pat McGrath. Whenever she has a sale, you can always refer back to this video as well. And without further ado, let's take a look into my Pat McGrath collection. Well, first things first, I'm gonna show you the Mothership palettes. So these are the 10 panners. These are the most expensive item, but I think they truly set Pat McGrath apart from other brands. I wouldn't necessarily say these are starter items, but at the same time, they are my favorite items from the brand. So I'm gonna show you each of them individually. If you want to see swatches of these, I love you all, but this video is a lot of items so I'm going to link down below me ranking all of my Pat McGrath palettes where you will see all of the swatches in that video there is a palette that calls out to you so the first palette that I have is the mothership one subliminal palette this is one of my favorites this is one that I recommend for the everyday working person if you like to wear neutrals it does lean a little bit more cool which honestly I think makes this palette palette even more unique. This is actually one of my favorites. I've created some of my favorite looks. You can go daytime with this and you can go evening with this. I highly recommend this one. Here is Mothership 2 Subliminal. This one is not my favorite of the Pat McGrath palettes. I mean, it is amazing nonetheless because it's a Pat McGrath palette. But I think this one's dried out a little bit for me over the years, but it still is really pretty. If you like warmer tones, I think you'll like this. You have this fun pop of green. This pink is one of my favorites. I love that there's a black incorporated as well. I like this one. I don't love this one. It wouldn't be the first palette that I recommend to you, but it's, I mean, all of these are beautiful. So that is Mothership 2 Subliminal. Now we have this guy right here, Mothership 3 Subversive. Are you ready? This one, if you watch my rankings, this is my all-time favorite Pat McGrath palette. If you like color or experimenting with looks, this to me is the ultimate Pat McGrath experience. If you only wear neutrals, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one as your first choice, but it's my favorite and it embodies Pat McGrath, so I recommend this one the most. So next up we have the Decadence palette. I ordered this semi recently, so it comes in not as cool packaging. This is one, it's not that it's bad, but it's not my favorite, so I also wouldn't recommend this one. You don't have any of the super special shades. Again, she is so pretty, very high quality. I've created some awesome looks with this. If you become a member of my YouTube membership, I recently did a look with this that was absolutely insane, but not my favorite Mothership palette. Just thought I'd address. We're working on two weeks of these nails and this one chipped, but it is what it is. I was going to go in numerical order, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is the Midnight Sun palette. This is one that has grown on me. So I didn't used to love this one as much when it first came out, but I have actually ended up reaching for it a lot more than I thought I would. I think it's an interesting mix of colors. I normally don't go for the warm toned colors, but come on, look at this palette. I love the fun pop of purple as well. So I do actually really like this one. This is one, realistically, I'd recommend the most. I feel like it's a good combination of wearable, but still Pat McGrath-esque, a little bit out there. You have options to go deeper, you have options to go lighter, you have options to go colorful, you have options to keep it cool, keep it every day, and it just covers everything across the board. It's great for deep skin tones, it's great for light skin tones. There is a reason that this is one of the few palettes that they sell on Pat McGrath. It's because it's the best and the most versatile. So here we have the newest 
10 pan mothership palette. This is the Hutopian Dream palette and she is absolutely stunning. So this one is more almost fairy kind of vibes. You have extra glittery shades out here at the end. It's pinky, it's coral. I actually have ended up loving this palette. There's not as much versatility as some of the other palettes but it's really really pretty if you think you will like these tones. Yeah my box got beat up with this one but I still can't get myself to get rid of it. This is Divine Rose. If you are an everyday makeup wearer and you want the absolute most wearable mothership palette, I would recommend this one. We have really pretty neutral rose tones. So they aren't vibrant rose tones. They're more on the wearable side. But that's why I do recommend this palette for more natural makeup wearers if you want to experiment with Pat McGrath. You still get the glitter shades, but they're definitely more toned down. And then this is probably my most used Pat McGrath palette. This is Divine Rose 2. For me, it's that perfect combination of wearable, oops, wrong side, <laughs> perfect combination of wearable but still bold at the same time. I can get natural everyday pinky looks but of course we can amp it up especially with this shade right here this is such a fun addition i recommend this one for if you can be experimental but you know in your truest of hearts you're probably basic that is me that's how i would describe myself so i do really love this so that is all my mothership palettes Let's grab some of the other sizes and options that I have. I love these mega palettes from Pat McGrath. This is the Celestial Divinity palette. It's just an amazing bang for your buck. Okay, you ready? The catch with these is you don't get the Blitz Astral shades that are so special to the Pat McGrath brand, but I love this color story so much. This has ended up becoming one of my favorite Pat McGrath palettes. Again, it's just a great way to try her formula. She normally comes out with these over the holidays, so if she comes out with one this year, I definitely recommend it. This is from the most recent holiday season. This is Celestial Odyssey. I don't like this one as much. A lot of people love this one, especially over the last one that I showed you, but I can't get behind it as much. I find it a little harder to create looks with. Definitely looks more neutral, but I've been rather uninspired by this palette. The looks I do with it are fine, but it's, it's not my favorite. Those are the two mega palettes. Let's go over the six panners that I have. The six panners typically tend to be limited edition, so keep that in mind. This one is an ancient one. This is from a launch years ago. This is the Mothership Subversive Metal Morphosis, and it has shades that are based on metals. Kind of old school Pat McGrath, but these are such high quality. I've had this for years, and they still feel just as new. This one is another older one. This is from the first ever six pan launch. This is the Mothership Subversive Lovey and Rose. I'd love to see her come out with an updated 10 pan Mothership version of this because this was a little before its time. Shades like these weren't as popular when this one came out. So I think if she did an updated version, everybody would be obsessed with it. So I still like to keep it around in hopes that one day that would happen. Pat McGrath, put me on your marketing team. I just made a mess because my nail dug into one of the shadows, but yes, I would love to be in a room with Pat McGrath and propose that. Trying to get the older ones out of the way, this is the Mothership Subliminal Dark Star. I wasn't too crazy about this. This one is one of my least favorite palettes. It's just really smoky, not up my alley personally. I haven't reached for it anytime recently, but that's this palette. Nice, dark, and smoky. I feel like Pat McGrath played more with her color stories back in the day. Now we're in the phase of roses, which Pat McGrath really loves. This is the Mothership palette. What even is the name? Rose Decadence. I wasn't crazy about this one. The quality seemed just not as good as the other palettes. It still is stunningly beautiful, but yeah, something just wasn't as good. All right, and now we're on to the infamous Bridgerton collection. This is the first Bridgerton palette to come out. Love the packaging of this. This is Diamond of the First Water. Yeah, it's not as good as some of her other palettes, but I still think it is a gorgeous palette. And I actually ended up using this quite a lot. So I really like it despite its flaws. I think it's a pretty palette. And then this one is also quite new. This is the newest Bridgerton palette to launch. What is this one called? The Bell? 
Belle of the Ball. And how beautiful is this? This one is even more infamous than the first one because this one kind of looks like the first one. Yeah, they're very close. I would say you don't need both, but this one is still really pretty and this shadow does it for me. It speaks to me. Still a stunningly gorgeous palette nonetheless. Let's work our way into the quads and we should be done with eyeshadows. I'll pull out my singles after this. But here's an older palette. This is a Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. She needs to come out with these Blitz Astral Quads again. I would love to see her come out with these during the holiday season in more colors because this is the Blitz Astral Formula from Pat McGrath. This is a great way to get her Blitz Astral Formulas without paying the price of a 10 panner. You missed out on these if you didn't pick these up. That's all I gotta say. These are amazing. You still might be able to pick one or two of the shades up online on the website, but yeah, totally worth it. Next up, we have the Blitz Astral in Ritualistic Rose, but this is a gorgeous wearable rosy toned of the Blitz Astral formula. I've reached for this one a lot to, you know, just use a color or two. Really beautiful. You can see it glistening right now. So this quad is the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Interstellar Icon. This came out a couple years ago. I love this blue. I think this blue is stunning. This is an interesting mix of colors for Pat McGrath. Again, I wish she would go back to the old days where she came out with color stories like these. Here's another one from that collection. This is Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Fleur Fantasia. This one isn't my favorite. It's not a blitz quad, so you'll see there's different formulas. It's a little bit on the light side. You'll definitely get a pretty look with it, but also keep in mind that there's no depth to this palette. And here is the last one from that collection specifically. This is the Ritualistic Rose Celestial Divinity Quad. And here's what this one looks like. This one is so stunning, is it not? I love these two shades right here. This shade is super unique, even for Pat McGrath. This one was a fun one. This is a quad that came out kind of on its own. This is Divine Rose Eden Eternal. Let's take a look at this one. I never really was obsessed with this one. I haven't used it too much. It's just a rose quad and you've seen at this point Pat McGrath has a lot of rose palettes available to us so I haven't used it a lot but I mean it's pretty. Next we have the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Bronze Borealis or is it Borealis? Never remember. But here's what this one looks like. These, the pans got a little bit smaller. The quality on this is unmatched, really stunning, but not an exciting color story, but it's a really great palette all around, superb quality. Here's another quad from that collection. This is the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Deep Space Divinity. This again is not one of my all-time favorite color stories from Pat McGrath, but it still is beautiful nonetheless. Again, this one is definitely a keeper for the quality. Here's the last quad that I have to share with you. This is one of my favorite quads from Pat McGrath. This is the Venus in Fleurs Luxe Quad in Voyeurist stick vixen and look at this oh you guys so this again is one of the best quality palettes from Pat McGrath. This one is unique because even though the color story isn't unique, the formula is just so good that the palette is unique because of how good the formula is. I highly recommend if you're able to get your hands on this quad, definitely do it. It is so worth it. So these sum it up for eyeshadows. Pat McGrath did a rendezvous with individual shadows. Didn't go over well. These are on deep, deep discounts. But I do like the cute little packaging. So we have Crimson fire. I'm actually gonna swatch these because we have the time to do individual shadows. That's crimson fire. Really gorgeous red shade. This next one is corrupt copper. This one is pretty intense as well. Look at this. And then the last individual that I have is Synthetica. This is an awesome shade too. I have only used it a handful of times but look at that. Okay let's swatch it. So those are the three individuals that I still have my hands on. This was in my individual drawers. This is one of the few fails from Pat McGrath. This is the Chroma Lux Highlight Cream. Can't even read the name here, but I don't like it. What is your name? I don't know. This is not good quality. This is probably dried out. Let's see. It's just like a cream. I don't know. I didn't like it. But anyways, I still do have it though, so... Here we go. 
Oh my gosh, I lied. We're not done with eyeshadows. This is, I think, the last of it. These are like almost archived Pat McGrath stuff for me. These are from the very first initial launch of Pat McGrath. These are definitely expired, but I have a variety of Pat McGrath pigments and glitters. How cool is this ruby glitter? We have a copper glitter. These are awesome. And then we also have some cream shadows. And these cream shadows, I'm telling you guys, are insanely good. I don't know about anymore, but they used to be. I'm gonna swatch to see. Take a look at these. I'm not gonna focus on them too much because I don't think you can get them anymore. Liquid metal. Oh my gosh, these are old and they're still incredible. <gasps> wow, okay. I forgot how good the cream shadows were. And then we also have these pigments. What are these called? I don't even know. As you can see, they are pigments. And these go over the creams for an insanely metallic look. This is OG Pat McGrath right here. So I forgot to show you that I do still have these old Pat McGrath stuff. Does anybody else? I don't think you can buy these anymore, but I mean, the packaging on these is super cheap. It's like lab samples, it looks like, which was the intention. Yeah, I forgot I had these, how cool. Let's get into face palettes. So I'm gonna start off with the Highlight Trio. This is the Sublime Skin Highlighting Highlighter Palette. I don't reach for this one too often, so Pat McGrath has this formula that's almost like a putty kind of formula. I don't use this too often. I'm really not in love with this highlight formulation. I don't necessarily recommend it because I don't use it personally too often. Next, we have this palette from the Bridgerton collection. This is the Divine Blush and Glow Love at First Sight Trio. A really beautiful palette with one of the best cheek formulas and a beautiful highlight formula. I definitely recommend if you can get your hands on a blush palette from Pat McGrath, you will love it. And then the last cheek palette that I have is from the most recent Bridgerton collection. This is the Blushing Delights palette. I really like this palette. I think the quality is nice. The shades themselves are a little overly pigmented, so you need to get used to this and kind of know how to work it really. The packaging is really cheap. I don't like that. The packaging does not scream luxury to me at all, so I would recommend this Bridgerton palette over this one, but still nice. Okay, so now let's talk complexion. These are the complexion products that are currently in use from Pat McGrath for me. Here is what the primer looks like. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. I don't find that this does too much, if anything, for me. It's not something that I've ever really recommended. It's just kind of there. I use it in my Pat McGrath video. It gives slight hydration, but not my favorite primer, though my mother with oily skin swears this makes her makeup last longer. So maybe take that into consideration, but not something that I recommend. Does anybody remember the hype of this foundation when it first came out? This is the Skin Fetter Sublime Perfection Foundation. I wear the shade LM9. This is a lightweight everyday foundation. It gives about a light medium coverage. People didn't like this at first because it's so expensive. And I guess people at the time wanted full coverage, but that is not what this foundation was about. I think now that more wearable makeup is now trendy, more people love this foundation. It really is luxurious. I honestly haven't worn this in a while. I'm going to have to use this. Now, if you know, you know. One of my all-time favorite formulas from Pat McGrath is the concealer. This is probably my all-time favorite concealer. I have a third shade. I think it's somewhere in one of my other bins because I recently used it. LM9 is my under eye shade, but I love it so much I have it in multiple colors. LM12 is my skin tone shade for spot concealing, and I also have M17 to do a little bit of a natural contour. The best concealer, it gives full coverage, but it still looks really natural on the skin and smooths over everything. There are two different powders. So the first powders that we have here are the loose powders, which are called the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfecting Setting Powder. I have two different shades, light one and light medium two. So light one I use to set my under eyes. This is a solid powder. It's not my favorite powder in the world. I still love like my Maybelline Fit Me more than this, but I still grab for it from time to time. Nothing stands out to me about this powder, if I'm being honest. 
because this powder is what stands out to me from Pat McGrath. So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Under Eye Powder. If you're gonna go Pat McGrath powders, you need to go with these. So these are in super cheap packaging and they explode and break easily. So this cannot go in your purse or to travel. It is factually one of the most smoothing powders in my collection. So I use this shade right here, the light, for my under eyes and then I use the shade medium. I love it so much even though it's a an under eye powder for all over my face. So uh, yeah, these are an amazing powder and they blur the face beautifully, but there are some flaws, but they're so good that I don't care. And then the last thing that I have on the table here is this guy right here. This is the Skin Fetish Highlighter and Balm Duo in Nude. Pat McGrath has a couple other shades in this. I haven't picked them up because if I'm being honest, I don't really use this too often. I'm not a cream or liquid highlighter fan. So one side I'll show you is more of a balm and one side is more of a highlight. My highlight side, is it dry? It's a little dry now, yeah. So the balm is still good to go, but the highlight side's a little on the drier side. I don't even feel the need to repurchase did you guys see that? This just completely fell out. Anyways, it's dry. Even though this is mostly dried out, I won't be repurchasing this because honestly, you guys, I didn't really use it. So yeah. All right, let's get into cheeks. I want to start off with the Divine Blushes. I have six shades that I absolutely love. So this first shade is Divine Rose. It is kind of a classic rosy shade. So I that's what Divine Rose looks like. Next we have Nude Venus, which looks like that. This is the brightest of the blushes I own. This is Cherish. She does have brighter shades, but these are just the ones that I ended up with. Really beautiful. This one right here is Nymphette. This is what Nymphette looks like, gorgeous. One of my favorite mauve shades. Desert Orchid is my all-time favorite warm blush, like ever, not just in the Pat McGrath line. Literally my favorite warm blush ever. It has a pretty golden glow to it. And then the last blush that I have is Flirtatious, which is a nice, cool, everyday blush. Love this one as well. So these are all of the blushes I own. If you aren't familiar with the Pat McGrath formula for blushes, they are so beautiful, so luxurious. They last a long time. They're easy to blend and she has an amazing color range. All right, let's get into the highlights that I have. You did see that highlight palette earlier, but these are the individual highlights. We'll start off with my least favorite one. <laughs> so this, what is this even called? The Sublime Skin Highlighter. This came out a couple years ago. This highlight is super heavy and I do not like it. It's like a weird putty formula. It's, it's not good, I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> let me swatch it for you. It looks pretty by swatch, but not on my skin. This one right here is the Sublime Skin Highlighter. I love this one. This one is beautiful. So first of all, look at this. This came out during a holiday season, I believe. Even though highlighters all look the same on the skin, they are all so beautiful. Okay. This next one I'm not a fan of. This next one is the Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter in Divine Rose. Not too crazy about this one, it was okay. As you can see, it took Pat McGrath a while to find like her staple good highlight formula. That's pretty though, it has a nice rose shift to it, but again, we have better. So the best highlighters in the line are gonna be these three right here. So these two, right here are from the Bridgerton collection. So this first shade, Extreme Gold 002, obviously not meant for my skin tone. I picked it up because I'm a collector. But yeah, that's definitely for deep skin tones. Incandescent Gold, oh my gosh, this is worth every penny. I love this highlight. And it's super smooth on the skin, totally worth it. And then the last highlight formula, this is like her permanent line formula. It is really nice. These are the Divine Glow highlights. This one is in Golden Nectar. She actually is like soft launched these. There was only like one shade to begin with and very soon in a launch, she's going to be coming out with more colors, which I think is fantastic because this formula is just beautiful. So I'm very excited for that. So my favorite formulas are this Divine Glow formula and then 
these two super duper overpriced ones, but I, I don't care, they're great. So, so these are all of the individual highlights I have in my collection. Pencils, most of these are lip pencils, but I do have an eyeliner pencil sneaking up in here. So let's talk about this real fast. This is the Pat McGrath, obviously. <laughs> a Perma Gel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil in Extreme Black. This is a very nice, very black eye pencil. It's not one of my all-time favorites, but it is a solid one. I don't think you need to go to Pat McGrath for this, like go out of your way, but if you have it, you know it's nice. I've also tried their liquid liner. I don't have it, but that's because it dries out super duper fast. It has the shortest lifespan, so I don't recommend it. Pat McGrath's liquid liner is amazing until it's not, which is like a week later, I feel like. <laughs> Let's get to lip pencils. So Pat McGrath has one of my all-time favorite lip pencil formulations. Not only are they creamy, but they are also long wearing, which is difficult to find. So I have collected some. I swear I have more but they're in makeup bags they are in different baskets for videos because I've used them so this is what we have in front of us and I'm gonna do this in no particular order whatsoever first up we have ground control which is a dark brown okay I just had one roll away and we have major which is a red done undone if you like can you stop <laughs> if you like a neutral everyday Lip, I recommend this one. This is one of my most used. Let me show you Supernatural next. A little bit darker than Done on Done. I use Supernatural a lot too. And then here's my last kind of super wearable nude lip favorite contour. Ooh, this is scratching me, I need to sharpen it. But this one is a little bit more cool. Really like that one. And then here's a crazy one that I'll swatch for you. This is 1980. Look at that, nice and bright. That's quite a unique color. And then we have Buff. If you like a nude pink lip, Buff will be for you. And then the last color that I have is Bare Rose, which is exactly how it sounds. Oh, let's see if I can remember at the top of my head. Major Ground Control Done Undone Supernatural Contour 1980. Uh, this is Bare Rose. Why is this one? Why am I blinking? What are you? Buff. Buff. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Those are all of the lip pencils that I own for Pat McGrath. One of the must-haves from the Pat McGrath line. Seriously, one of the best. I'm <sighs> okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of lipsticks to work with. I go crazy when Pat McGrath has like her $10, $12 lip sale. Yeah. I don't even... Let's just start. There are all kinds of different formulas in here. So this is the Lip Fetish Divine Lip Shine in Temptress. So this is kind of like a balm. Do I dare swatch all of these? I'm going to. Then let's do the pretty glittery ones. This formula is called the Blitch Trans Lipstick and you will see they're a little bit more glitzy. So let me swatch them for you. If you wanna get a close up, I picked the one that doesn't have as much glitz. Of course I did, but let's swatch. Skin Sane, right? That does not look very glittery. I love this one, but it's the least, I'm dropping everything. It's the least glitzy. Skin Fix, that one has more glitz. Lady Stardust, that's gorgeous. Full Fantasy. So those are all of the Blitz ones that I have. Let's do these two. These are from a specific collection, which is why they have packaging like this, but they are just the regular Pat McGrath formula. Divine Romance, ooh, she's old. Amore, I like pink as you can see, so does Pat. I only have one mini left from her little mini lipsticks, unless they're hiding in my collection. My collection's a bit disorganized since after moving, I'm not gonna lie. But this is only one I could find in the shade Christy. <gasps> I'm just gonna throw this away. I don't own Christy anymore. I'm gonna do the rest of the black lipsticks. This is gonna take a while, so please bear with me. <laughs> oh, starting off with one of my favorites, Peep Show. A really nice light pink. Candy Flip, She Bold, Perfumo, Obsessed. 
This is kind of a classic patch shade Omi. If you like the mauves, Venus and Fleurs. Those are kind of close, no? And Madame Grage. This is an ingredient. That was not really supposed to happen, but cool. 1995, Executive Realness, Fever Dream, Fembot, La Beja. Dream Lover, that's another one of my favorites and most used. Then McMenemy. What is it? McMenemy. Anyways, just a few more. <laughs> I'm gonna wipe off my arm and we'll finish off. Let's get to it. My arms are a little stained. <laughs> Softcore is a good one. It's quite purple though. Extravaganza. Very bright. How did it work out that all of the bright ones are in this round? Elson, classic red, one of her most popular. Guinevere is a good one. Here is Elson 2. That one is a little bit more red orangey. Flesh 5. Full blooded modern woman. This one I don't wear too much because it's really out there. <laughs> Doesn't really flatter me. Polaroid pink is a very bright pink. And then unnatural natural is this one right here. All right, so those are all of the regular line lipsticks. I have some Bridgerton lipsticks that recently came out, so I'm gonna put all these away and then we'll swatch these because I love these. Okay, so these are the lipsticks that came out in the most recent Bridgerton collection. So these are still available, which is why I wanted to swatch them for you. Venusian Pink. One of my favorites. A lot of these are very close though, so you definitely don't need all of the shades from this collection. I say that as I have Entranced shows up, which is deeper. Oh, this one is actually my favorite, Negligee. This is the one that I've been using the most. It's a little bit more nude, which is why I like it. You know, it has that neutralness in there. Nude Romantique 2, Veiled Rose. This one is a gorgeous one if you like the rose tones. And then the last lipstick for today is Infatuation. Just a warning with these, the packaging is absolutely stunning, but this is very cheap packaging. Like it doesn't feel as good as it looks. I still like them anyways. I think this is a great collection of colors. I wanted to show you guys some archived Pat McGrath products. So this is not archived, but the rest of these are from really old launches, like back in the day when they didn't have nice packaging. They were that sample style kind of look. So I have a bunch of these liquid lipsticks. This is my all time favorite. What's the name? Possessed. I was obsessed obsessed with this wore it all throughout college. I mean, these are very much expired at this point, but I don't know, as a collector, my hoarderish tendencies, I still have them. So, and it's fun to show you like in videos like this, there also are these, I don't even know the name of these. Oh, these are like OG lipsticks and they come in like this. They honestly don't smell expired, but yeah, I'm not gonna swatch these because you can't get it. And then we also have the lip gloss. Oh my gosh, if she came out with packaging like this now, we would eat her up. Like, just tear her apart. <laughs> but yeah, this was the old days. Anybody else have any of these? What is available now are her liquid lipsticks. I believe she has a larger range now. I have two. I hate these lipsticks. I think they're really bad. They show every fine line on the lip. They are not flattering. I like these liquid lipsticks better than these new ones. So the first one that we have is Divine Rose, and Divine Rose is very close to that possessed color that I was obsessed with. Pretty sure they're the same, but super pretty color. I just hate the formula, so don't recommend the liquid lipsticks. I also have Divine Nude, which looks like this. This is such a pretty color. It's a shame I hate the formula. And then the last thing that I pulled out to the side, so this is out of order, but I forgot I had this. The Intensifies Artistry Wand. This is Pat McGrath's version of like a mixing medium. I like it, I don't love it. I don't know if you can see, it gets a little gungy. It does work with intensifying the Pat McGrath shadows, kind of giving a sticky base. I don't use it too often, so not obsessed with it, but I have it. 
All right, friends, now we are on to the last category. I like feel like there's things that I'm forgetting and I'm about to be really upset when I discover that. But lip glosses are the final category and Pat McGrath has my all-time favorite lip gloss formula, as you can see. I'm not gonna swatch all of these because I have actually a swatch video already up, so I will link that down below for you. But I'm gonna show you the colors. We'll start off with the minis. So I got these in a cute little set. So let's get nice and close. As you can see, it was like a reddish set. So we have Naked Rose, which is the glitter finish. Flesh 6. I have two. I should throw one away. Okay. Flesh 4, Love Potion, and Bronze Temptation. Seriously, you guys, if you have not tried the Pat McGrath lip glosses, get one of these sets when there is a sale. You will fall in love with the formulation, and then you'll end up purchasing this many. <laughs> like me and it is worth it so I'm gonna just paw it and name them for you but I want you to take a look at the shifts the finishes so we have Angelic, Gold Allure, Earth Angel, and Blitz Gold so that's these four next four right here we're into a little bit more nude see there's a little bit more organization with this okay Future Femme, Peach Perversion, Coral Liaison and Bronze Divinity. Really pretty nude shades. Secret Lover, Divine Rose, Heavy Petal, Carnal Desire. And you guys, all of these finishes have different level of pigmentation and the way that they look. Like these guys with the glitters tend to have less pigment but more glimmer. This guys with the soft shine are like a medium pigmentation and the flat ones tend to have the most pigmentation. It does vary from color to color. These four kind of look the same, huh? <laughs> so we have Prima Donna, Aphrodisiac, Flesh Astral, and Wicked Whisper. So pinky nudes here. Now we have more of our crazy shades, which surprisingly, these look prettier on the lips than you would think. Astral Flash Dance, Astral Moon Flower, Paraphernalia, and Belladonna. This one is so fun for certain looks that I've used it for. And the last four are Faux Real, Nude Negligee, Twilo and Dare to Bear and I get asked what my must-have color is. It's right here, Dare to Bear. Faux Real is also a really great one. I tend to prefer nude lips so that's why these two are my go-to's. But yeah, I mean, if there's anything that you can get from this video, it's how much I love the glosses. I gave many reviews during this whole video but my passion for these glosses are just so strong. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you had fun looking and talking about Pat McGrath stuff. I'm sure there's stuff that that I forgot, you know, swimming in these drawers. Ever since I moved, these drawers are so unorganized. Things are in the wrong drawers. I did not do a good job unpacking. That's for a whole separate video to get that situation figured out. Yeah, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.